that means 20% of the activities in the process cause 80% of the delays. So it is dealing with the Pareto principle. This law indicates that we need to identify what are these 20% of the activities which are contributing to 80% of the waste and we need to take the initiatives to reduce them. Hello friends, welcome back. In this video, we are going to understand one important and unique topic that you might not heard or you might not learn anywhere. This topic is very important for every working professional, whether you are a CEO, middle management or if you are belonging to any other managerial positions. It is very important for if you are the working professional who are interested to acquire this Lean Six Sigma training and certification also. So before to start, what are these five important rules? five important laws let me explain why it is important to learn for everybody okay so let's dive into it what are the five laws in lean six sigma for process optimization let's start with why we need to learn that because if you see lean six sigma is an approach that is very important for the organization in both ways for example if you want to increase the speed of the processes by reduction of the waste we need to implement the lean six sigma or if you want to improve the quality of your product, your services or information by initiating the projects, then again, you need to implement the Lean Six Sigma. In other words, we can say if you want to improve the profitability and if you want to beat the competition, you must execute this Lean Six Sigma into your organization. Now, irrespective of whether you are the organization or the individual or a team, you need to understand that Lean Six Sigma training and implementation is very critical for you in today's world. Let's understand what is the first law in Lean Six Sigma for the process optimization. The first law in Lean Six Sigma for process optimization is the law of market. Now, what is this law? This law states that customers critical to quality defines quality. This is highest priority for improvement. That means if you want to prioritize all your improvement efforts, you need to understand first who is your customer and what is important to them. So whether you are going to implement the Lean alone or Six Sigma alone or Lean Six Sigma together, this is the most important thing. We need to understand who is our customer and what is important to them. If you ask this question, why it is important to follow the law of market on top priority because it is very critical to maintain and to improve your share of business into the market. If you want to improve your profitability by gaining the more business, again, this law of market is very important. Right? So to grow the business, to have the profitability and to maintain the share of business, the law of market we need to follow. Now, once we understand the first law, that is the law of market, let's understand what is the second law. The second law in Lean Six Sigma for process optimization is the law of flexibility. Now, what is the meaning of this law? The velocity of any process is directly proportional to the flexibility of the process. Now, what is the meaning of that? You need to understand here the Little's law. If you see, the Little's law says that lead time is equal to amount of work in process divided by the average completion rate. So here, if you want to improve the velocity of your process, if you want to improve the lead time of your process, we need to work on how we can reduce the work in process and in other words, how we can improve the completion rates. Now, when you are working on this law of flexibility, what it consists of? It consists of the lower change over time, lower downtimes and lower waiting and other best. This is again very important law for process optimization. The third law in Lean Six Sigma for the process optimization is the law of focus. Now, this is not new to anyone because everyone is aware about the 80-20 principle. That means 20% of the activities in the process cause 80% of the delays. So it is dealing with the Pareto principle. This law indicates that we need to identify what are these 20% of the activities which are contributing to 80% of the waste and we need to take the initiatives to reduce them. Once we understand this third law of the process optimization, let's learn what is the fourth law. The fourth law is the law of velocity. What this law states? The velocity of any process is inversely proportional to the amount of work in process or the number of things in the process. The number of things can be the long change over time, it can be the rework or scrap, it can be the variation in supply and demand or it can be the time for product offering. These are some of the examples who are adding more working process 
into your processes. Now, once we understand this fourth law about the law of velocity, let's learn the fifth law of the process optimization. And this law is the law of complexity and cost. Now, what is the meaning of this law? The complexity of the service and product offering generally adds more non-value-added cost and working process. Now, if we compare this non-value-added cost, the complexity of the service and product offering is more compared to both, which is due to the poor quality and due to the unlimited process. If you compare the cost due to the poor quality or cost due to the slow speed of your process problems, both are lower compared to the complexity of the service and product offering. So this is also an indicator of that we need to focus on this complexity of the service and product offering on priority. These are the five important laws in Lean Six Sigma for the process optimization. And I'm sure that from this video, you have got an idea about it, why it is important and why we need to follow them. Let's learn another important topic into the next video.